So coming to the pathophysiology of the uh, asthma. Before we get into pathophysiology per se, let's let's see the pathology what is happening in, in asthma. Okay. So subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. So coming to the pathophysiology of the uh, asthma. Before we get into pathophysiology per se, let's let's see the pathology what is happening in, in asthma. Okay. So if you study the sputum of patients with asthma, you will notice that there is increased eosinophils. So what we call as hypoeosinophilia. Then second, uh, you may get basophilic mucus plugs called as Kirschman spirals and third one characteristic asthma something called as charcoal laden crystals uh, a critical mcq point that, that you must be remembering is that charcoal laden crystals comprise of eosinophil derived galactin 10 protein so this galactin 10 is a protein derived from eosinophil and the charcoal laden crystals are made of that these three eosinophil uh, the sputum findings are important from the mcq perspective and i expect you to know remember them perfectly well Okay. If you see the uh, uh, biopsy specimens of the patients with uh, bronchial asthma, you will notice that uh, notice certain changes. Okay. The first and most important change is there is mucus hypersecretion. Okay. Then second uh, thing you you will notice is there is goblet cell. Hyperplasia. So the number of goblet cells is increased. The third point you must know is there is thickening of the basement membrane, and that is precisely because of the thickening of um, precisely because of the sub-basement membrane fibrosis. And this sub-basement membrane fibrosis is because of the deposition of collagen, MCQ uh, important point, collagen 1 and type 3 collagens. So the sub-basement sub membrane fibrosis is because of the deposition of collagen type 1 and type 3. Then you may notice that there is infiltration of infiltration by the eosinophils and mast cells then uh, there is also increased number of glands gland uh, hypoplasia and hypertrophy of smooth muscle layer hypertrophy of smooth muscle layer is utilized in uh, this feature is targeted in a specific treatment modality for bronchial asthma. What is that? Okay. Yes, that is bronchial thermoplasty. See, whenever there is a, a bronchial asthma, because of repeated uh, exposure to the triggers, uh, there is hypertrophy of the smooth muscle. This is almost akin to sending your bronchial muscles to gym. Okay. So this hypertrophied muscle with the passage of time mount a uh, more stronger response to allergens, the more stronger bronchoconstriction to allergens. So in bronchial thermoplasty what we do is we expose the uh, bronchial uh, mucosa and, and, and thus indirectly to the uh, uh, bronchial smooth muscles to high intensity heat. So thermoplasty, high intensity heat, which will reduce the hypertrophy of 
or kind of introduce uh, atrophy of the bronchial wall smooth muscles and that significantly reduces the asthma uh, attack episodes and studies have consistently proven the uh, efficacy of bronchial thermoplasty and it is increasingly being used across centers wherever there is availability of a bronchoscopy suit okay. now let us look at the uh, pathophysiology we have just now looked at the uh, pathology now let us look into the pathophysiology okay. so the physiological hallmark physiological hallmark of asthma is airway hyperresponsiveness okay. so this is all is the reason why we get the symptoms that we get in, in, in asthmatics okay. and we also know that this is a inflammatory condition led by eosinophils so this is basically an eosinophilic bronchitis but remember there is another entity which is per se called eosinophilic bronchitis and to differentiate it from the uh, asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis it is that condition is known as non asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis okay there are certain differences between uh, eosinophilic bronchitis that we see in asthma and naeb the main difference is that the patients with naeb present with cough often chronic but there is no objective evidence of airway hyperresponsiveness how do we demonstrate airway hyperresponsiveness we demonstrate airway hyperresponsiveness by demonstrating bronchodilator reversibility so that is absent in patients with non asthmatic uh, eosinophilic bronchitis these patients do respond well to sorry this patient do respond well to inhaled corticosteroids okay so the treatment of choice for the patients with uh, non asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis is inhaled corticosteroids and mcq point now coming back to the uh, asthma proper so we understand now that in the pathophysiology uh, important thing is that it's 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 a disease led by uh, eosinophils and we should understand why there is hyper eosinophilia and eosinophilic inflammation in asthma that is because in a normal person whenever we are exposed to an allergen we mount th1 cells against those allergens and we learn to I mean the th1 cells kind of get accustomed with the uh, allergen exposure but the same trivial allergen in an asthmatic when exposed they mount th2 cell response okay so the, uh, the allergen is first presented to the antigen presenting cell which in an, uh, here is a dendritic cell okay which stimulates the th2 cells okay so uh, further cytokines produced by th2 cell will lead to eosinophil recruitment and also contribute to the uh, mast cell destabilization or activation leading to inflammation and airway hyperresponsiveness so uh, how do these uh, things carry out their uh, action is mainly by certain cytokines okay so uh, there are pro inflammatory cytokines and there are anti inflammatory cytokines so the pro inflammatory cytokines that we see in patients with bronchial asthma are so the uh, interleukin 4 5 13 9 these levels are elevated in patients with bronchial asthma and there these are pro inflammatory cytokines then uh, anti inflammatory cytokines whose levels are often reduced in patients with bronchial asthma okay 
they are interleukin 10 and interleukin 12 okay remember the uh, interleukin 12 absence of inter interleukin 12 is a critical drive for uh, switch from th1 to th2 response whenever we are exposed to allergens so if interleukin 12 is not there then the normal th1 response is not mounted and instead the uh, type 2 helper t cells are activated uh, leading to inflammation and airway hyper responsiveness another factor that helps uh, to recruit th2 over th1 in, in an asthmatic is thymocyte specific lymphopoietic protein tslp so remember these two points which uh, support th2 response over th1 interleukin 12 and tslp so now we know what gross pathological changes are happening and what uh, pathophysiological changes are happening that actually trigger an asthma uh, episode 